Sergeants, please start their recordings. Computer recording started. Thank you. Going to the cloud started. Thank you. Opening statement. And welcome to the New York City Council remote hearing for the subcommittee on zoning and franchises. At this time, we ask that all council members and council staff turn on their video for verification purposes. To minimize disruptions, please place all cell phones and electronic devices to silent. If you wish to submit testimony for the record, you may do so via email by sending it to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. Once again, that is landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. We thank you for your cooperation. Chair, we are ready to begin. Great, thank you. Good morning, I'm Council Member Francisco Moya. Uh, I am the Chair of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. I am joined remotely today by Council Members uh, Levine, oh, sorry, Levin, Barry, Gridencek, Ayala, Rivera, and Borelli. Uh, to start, I would like to note that uh, LU items 714 and 715 for the 42-11 9th Street Special Permit, as well as a pre-considered pre LU 718 and 7. One nine for the Cortelu Road rezoning are being laid over. Today we will vote on items heard last month by the subcommittee, including LUs uh, 712 and 713 for the Court Theater Rehabilitation Project in Manhattan, and pre-considered LUs 720 and 721 for the 42-01 28th Avenue rezoning in Queens. We will also hold public hearings on the 9114 Fifth Avenue rezoning in Brooklyn, and the 1214-32 Hillside Avenue rezoning in Queens. We will begin with a vote to approve with modifications, LU numbers 712 and 713 for the Court Theater Rehabilitation Project relating in property in Council Member Powers' district in Manhattan. The application seeks a zoning text amendment and a special permit pursuant to the amended text for property in the special Midtown district. The, request, the requested actions are intended to facilitate the rehabilitation and expansion of the existing court theater on West 48th Street, as well as the development of a new hotel building on the subject zoning lot, which would front on West 47th Street. The proposed text amendment would modify the theater rehabilitation provision for certain eligible zoning lots to allow bonus floor area to be used anywhere within such zoning lots and the special permit would facilitate a comprehensive modernization of the court theater site. The improvements include a range of operational and accessibility upgrades through the addition of a new structural annex, as well as interior pre um, preservation work throughout the existing individual landmark uh, theater building itself. Our modification to the zoning text will be to clarify and narrow the applicability provision of the special permit Council Member Powers is in support of the proposal as modified. And uh, we will now, we will also vote to approve with modifications pre-considered LU's number 720 and 721 for the 42-0128th Avenue rezoning uh, relating to uh, property in Council Member Constantinidis' district in Queens. The application as proposed seeks a zoning map amendment and related zoning text amendment to facilitate the development of a new mixed use building with approximately 54 dwelling units, approximately 16 of which would be affordable, as well as ground floor commercial use. Our modification will uh, strike MIH option two while retaining option one. Uh, Council member Constantinidis uh, is in support of the proposal as modified and uh, I want to make sure that before we move to a vote, that we have Council Member Powers here. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Moya. Um, thank you, uh, and, and members of the subcommittee here as well. Um, as discussed, I'm here today to speak on behalf of the core theater rehabilitation proposal, which includes a proposed amendment of the special uh, district zoning tax, as well as a requested special permit which together will allow the Schubert organization to undertake much needed renovation and expansion work at its landmark court theater site in my district. Uh, following the testimony received at this hearing of this, this subcommittee on January 7th, and after careful consideration and contemplation of the borough president and community board's recommendations, we support the following modifications uh, to the city planning commission's approval, uh, including adjusting the proposed text amendment to clarify 
the applicability and usage of the bonus area um, and limiting the to the smaller set of sites, but remaining consistent with the intent of the proposal and keeping it with the input from the community. At the end of the day, I think we all know this project will help the core theater do a much needed re rehab on their theater. Uh, right now, as the lights are off on Broadway, it is you know ever important to make sure that we are able to invest in the tourism industry, including Broadway and the theaters that make up such a big part of it. Um, I want to acknowledge and thank you, Community Board 5 and Borough President Gail Brewer for their thoughtful consideration and review of the project, all of which reinforces the necessity of bringing this important site closer to an up-to-date, modern, and accessible theater to reach a broader audience. Uh, and I don't have to tell anyone the importance of Broadway to New York City, nor the importance of supporting Broadway during this moment. Um, but as we got through this project, I want to say I had a great partner, and I want to say a very big thank you to Chair Moya for his partnership here on this project, um, as well as we have been in ongoing conversations with the applicants and various stakeholders here. I want to thank the entire land use division here in, uh, in the City Council, including Raju, Arthur, and Katie for their assistance on this project and Keith Theobald from my office. Um, I am asking members of the subcommittee to vote aye on the proposed modifications before you. And I hope that someday in the near future, we'll all be able to go to Broadway again and see a show and enjoy the theater. But for now, uh, this is one meaningful step we can take to help a uh, actor here, no pun intended, in the city that has been investing in uh, uh, the arts and the culture here. And I know this is of utmost importance to them. So I think the chair, I thank all the members of the subcommittee for their consideration here today and uh, encourage you to vote aye. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilman Powers, uh, for your hard work on this. I know how, how important this is to you. Uh, so we thank you for your leadership on this. Um, I now call uh, for a vote uh, to approve with modifications. I have described LU 712, 713, 720, and 721. Council, can you please call the roll? Chair Moya. I vote aye. <clears throat> Council member Levin. <laughs> Council member Levin. Council member Gordenchik. Aye. Council member Ayala. Aye. Council member Rivera. Aye. Council member Borelli. I vote aye. Council member Levin. Uh, chair, the vote is currently. I, I, think, I think we've been joined by Council member Reynoso. Am I not mistaken? Me. I just see him on the screen. Yeah. Council member Reynoso. I vote aye. Thank you, Chair. You're welcome. Uh, I do see Council Member Levin. Council Member Levin, we can uh, come back to him. Okay. He's experiencing technical issues. Chair, the vote is currently six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, uh, and no abstentions. And we will keep the vote open. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, now we will turn to our hearings, uh, but before we begin, uh, I wanna recognize the subcommittee council to review the remote meeting procedures. Thank you, Chair Moya. I am Arthur Ha, counsel to the subcommittee. Members of the public wishing to testify were asked to register for today's hearings. If you wish to testify and have not already done so, we ask that you please visit the New York City Council website at www.council.nyc. That's where we sign up. What can the people in shelter do to help get the bill passed? I'm sorry, Chair, this is Council. Okay. Is that Council Member Levin? Yes. Uh, Call oh. the mayor. Vote on the uh, I, I, I just want to vote uh, aye on all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I'm doing two things at once. Two Zooms at once. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Uh, Chair, the vote on the land use items are seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, with no abstentions, and the items will be recommended for approval to the full land use committee. Great. Thank you. For members of the public wishing to testify, if you have not already done so, we ask you to please visit the New York City Council website at www.council.nyc.gov to sign up. 
members of the public may also view a live stream broadcast of this hearing at the council's website. As a technical note, for the benefit of the viewing public, if you need an accessible version of this presentation, please send an email request to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. When called to testify, individuals appearing before the subcommittee will remain muted until recognized by the chair to speak. Applicant teams will be recognized as a group and called first. Members of the public will be called and recognized in groups of up to four names at a time. When the chair recognizes you, your microphone will be unmuted. Please take a moment to check your device and confirm that your microphone is on before you begin speaking. There is a slight delay in the unmuting process. Public testimony will be limited to two minutes per witness. If you have additional testimony you would like the subcommittee to consider, or if you wish to submit written testimony instead of appearing before the subcommittee, you may email it to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number and or project name in the subject line of your email. During the hearing, council members with questions should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of your participants panel. Council members with questions will be announced in order as they raise their hands. And Chair Moya will then recognize members to speak. Witnesses are requested to remain in the meeting until excused by the chair as council members may have questions. Finally, there will be pauses over the course of this meeting for various technical reasons. And we ask that you please be patient as we work through any issues. Chair Moya will now continue with today's agenda items. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, I now open the public hearing on pre-considered LU items for the 9114 Fifth Avenue rezoning proposal under ULERPS numbers C190447 ZMK and N190448 ZRK relating to property in council member Brandon's district in Brooklyn. Uh, the proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an existing C82 district to an R7A C24 district and a related zoning text amendment to establish a manager inclusionary housing area utilizing options one and two. The proposed action would facilitate the development of a new nine story mixed use building with 50 dwelling units up to 15 of which would be affordable as well as ground floor commercial use. Council, if you uh, please call up the first panel for this item. The applicant panel for this item includes Richard Lobel and Fayan Baitan, a youth counsel for the applicant, and Dr. Ankit Mehta on behalf of the applicant. Panelists, if you have not already done so, please accept the unmute request to begin speaking, in order to begin the speaking. Council, if, if you could um, please administer the affirmation. Panelists, please raise your right hands. Do you affirm and tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee in an answer to all council member questions? I do. I do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now we have received your slideshow presentation for this proposal. Uh, when you are ready to present it, please say so, and it will be displayed on screen by our staff. Slides will be advanced when you say next. Please note that there may be a slight delay in both the initial loading and the advancing of slides. As a technical note for the benefit of the viewing public, if you need an accessible version of this presentation, uh, please send an email to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. And now if the panelists would please uh, restate your names uh, and affirmation for the record, you may begin. Richard Lobel of Sheldon Lobel PC for the applicant. Good morning. Good morning. So if the presentation cannot be posted, I would be happy to run through it and uh, happy to answer any questions. Great. Good morning, uh, Chair Moya, council members. I'm uh, pleased to join Dr. Mehta as well as Fan Baton from my office to present the 9114 Fifth Avenue rezoning. Uh, as was stated by Chair Moya, this rezoning would take an existing CA2 zoning district and allow for an R7A C24 district to produce the roughly nine story building that you see in front of you. Next slide. So as you can see, the current zoning of the property is CA2 within the Bay Ridge Special District. So what does this allow? CA2 districts are intensive commercial districts allowing manufacturing, auto related uses, very you know, environmentally insensitive uses 
And so with regards to the local area, you have an area where you have a lot of residential and community facility uses in the immediate area of this property, including a four-story school across the street. Uh, and so generally speaking, the land use on this block and with these properties does not really reflect the context of the area, which is why the applicant here uh, sought the rezoning. Next slide. So the rezoning here would take roughly 11 or 12 properties, uh, including parts of certain lots, and rezone them to an R7A with C24. Uh, the rezoning would be in a roughly L-shaped pattern. The properties included within the zoning district area to be rezoned basically fall into one of two types of uses. The one is open parking and, and uh, you know, truck storage, which is primarily what is used by the ac applicant, auto sales, those commercial uses that were indicated by a CA2. And the second is um, mixed use residential and commercial properties, which right now are non-conforming and will become conforming under the proposed rezoning. Next slide. So the land use in the area, as can be seen from the map, you can see the uh, mixed use and residential properties located uh, in pale orange and yellow within the rezoning area. The rezoning area is bounded by the dotted area on the map and the, um, you know, the, the development site is located within the red lines. The development site has two arms to it, one along Fifth Avenue, the other along 92nd Street uh, with a rough uh, lot area of you know, short of 10,000 square feet, roughly 9,800 square feet. So you can see the applicant and the site uh, maintain very good street frontage. There's frontage along Fifth Avenue, a wide street here. It's basically, uh, as per other rezonings we've done in Brooklyn, a, a good site, a good candidate for rezoning to mixed use residential. Next slide. So we've included some photographs. Um, of the project area as well as the surrounding area. I think that there's three pages of photographs. You can feel free to page through those quickly, uh, just merely to show the two types of property here. Again, the open use on the site itself and the mixed use residential and with ground floor commercial, uh, which are existing in the area and would, would become conforming pursuant to the rezoning. Here's a copy of the zoning change map, which indicates the former CA2 zoning district within the Bay Ridge Special District. And then after that, the R7A C24 zoning district allowing for ground floor commercial with residential use above. Uh, the next page and remaining slides run through the zoning calculations as well as the proposed development. Uh, the proposed development on this lot would produce a roughly 4.59 FAR building of nine stories with uh, ground floor commercial and residential above. Uh, the units would total roughly 41 units with approximately 12 units for affordable MIH. Uh, and um, the remainder being market rate. These are a mixture of studios ones and twos. Um, I would note prior to taking any questions, and again, we're happy to answer any questions posed by the council, that this was a rezoning which was uh, greatly supported in the surrounding area, uh, as was, um, has been previously discussed on the record through the city planning meetings. This was a property which was eligible as a CA2 to um, have legal hotel development. Uh, there were actually, as a matter of public record, on file with Department of Buildings plans for a hotel on this site. Through uh, an iterative process and, and uh, a lot of good work on behalf of the community board and especially council member Justin Brannon, the community basically said no. They said that this context of this area does not really fit with a commercial use such as a hotel and had far more, uh, you know, were far more favorably inclined to allow for mixed use residential development with inclusionary housing, which is something which is not, um, you know, in, in not really uh, in uh, frequently um, provided in Community Board 10 Brooklyn. So we're really happy to have arrived at this point. Um, again, Council Member Brandon is largely, uh, through his efforts, has really um, labored the, you know, has really labored to make this a, a rezoning which would work for the area and for the applicant. And we're happy to answer any questions. Great, uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, uh, just a couple of questions um, dealing with the affordable housing. Uh, the application maps, uh, both options one and two, uh, what MIH option is the developer uh, planning to use? So this is actually a subject of some discussion. Unlike many rezonings where um, the applicant of their own accord approaches the city for a rezoning and so uh, you know, accepts the 
uh, the options uh, available under MIH, this applicant has essentially had very extensive com conversations, both with the community board and specifically with council member Brannon regarding affordability, has provided um, spreadsheets with regards to specific options and, and unit counts. So um, Chair Moy, in all, in all uh, frankness, um, the council member as recently as this morning through these discussions has said that um, he was, he's almost finalized his view on what the option should be. And so uh, he actually requested of me that we further discuss this and provide the council subsequent to the hearing with a final count, which is gonna you know, specifically relay units and options. But right now it is mapped option one and two. Um, and, and that's, you know, we, we haven't really come off of that, but I do know that, that council member Brandon is reviewing this intently and we'll be able to provide an answer to the council shortly. Okay, so you don't have uh, the ability to tell me the unit size mix of affordable units. The the I'm units in. no the unit size mix I'm able to tell you there are okay. studios currently eleven one bedrooms and twenty two rooms. The affordable units roughly now are twelve of those units, um, which Can you say that again, Richard. I I missed the sure. different part. Oh, I apologize. Uh, Ten studios, eleven one bedrooms, and um, sorry, 10, 10 studios, 11 one room bedrooms, and 22 bedrooms for a total of 41. Okay. Um, with roughly, I understand, 12 to 13 of those units um, as affordable units. With regards to the specific affordability and options, that's what has not yet been finally settled, but which we anticipate settling with the council member shortly. Okay. Great. Um, and are you uh, proposing to partner with a local non-for-profit organization to be the administering agent uh, for the affordable housing? We are. We've had those conversations, uh, you know, throughout the process. Um, the Brooklyn Borough President is obviously very interested and has historically been in, in the use of a local nonprofit. Um, we understand that uh, as part of the um, administering agent, uh, you know, there's a short list from HPD. Uh, and so we're happy to partner with a, with a local administering agent. So we, we would anticipate doing so here. Okay. Um, dealing with the ground floor commercial uh, space, what plans do you have for uh, the commercial use of the proposed development? So, um, you know, I, I don't think that this is something which has been greatly researched by the, by the developer here, um, you know, other than, and the community board did not express, express a huge preference either way. Um, you know, there was a great push here that they didn't want a hotel. Uh, barring that, um, the, the commercial uses remain fairly open. Uh, we would anticipate something that would be uh, amenable to local retail. Uh, the space is not that huge. It is you know, less than 9,000 square feet or roughly that of commercial space. Uh, and, it, and it you know, the frontages are kind of skewed. So uh, we would anticipate kind of a small scale local retail use. Okay. And uh, will there be any outreach to determine uh, community-oriented retail needs, uh, preferences <clears throat> at all? The applicant here has, has, had, you know, has had an incredible amount of discourse with the local community beginning prior to even when the rezoning began, when, you know, when there were these alternate plans for the site. So, uh, so you know, I, I would say that, yes, there would be discourse with Brooklyn Community Board 10 uh, we're happy to consult with them as far as what they would view to be uh, as advantageous for the site. Um, again, this is, um, you know, this is really a, you know, a rezoning which is, has been fully supported and even advocated for by the community. So we have no issue with going to them and, and having that discussion. I, you know, I, without speaking for the applicant, I would say it's his preference to have a use which would be favored by the local community. Great. Um, also, uh, can you describe your, your plans uh, for uh, local hiring and construction? Yes, yeah, so, um, you know, I, again, um, I, I think the applicant here has, you know, has received, the, uh, received information from the Brooklyn Borough President about uh, preferences for local hiring and, and NWBE. I th and I think that there would be a, a preference for that. I, wouldn't, I don't have any numbers to give you, um, primarily because again, this was, um, you know, this was basically a process where the applicant didn't even know that they were going to get a mixed use residential commercial building until, you know, relatively late in the game. Um, so I would say that um, this is something that the applicant would discuss. It's not, you know, this is not anything definitive right now, but, uh, you know, we understand the preference and uh, particularly from the Brooklyn Borough President 
And I'd say it's something that we're happy to discuss on a going forward basis. Okay, uh, so this is important uh, just to make sure um, we follow up on this because my follow-up question is how many uh, right. hires would you actually typically be involved in a project uh, like this? So, you know, we'd like to have those numbers. Sure, I think uh, Chair Moya, because I don't wanna waste the council's time and the committee's time, the subcommittee's time, I think that um, what we would do here would be when the conversation with Justin Brannon, with Council Member Brannon is finalized with regards to the affordability, uh, we would also include within those materials a discussion of the construction jobs that would likely be generated by this, as well as um, the rough percentages for local hiring. Okay, and and would you commit in that process to uh, to ensure that there's follow up and progress reports on the commitments that are made? Yeah, I don't know whether or not I know Dr. Mehta is on the phone uh, again or on the Zoom call. Um, I think we would we would definitely commit to following up with with the. Uh, council or necessary parties regarding um, the ongoing commitments. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Richard. Uh, that's it for me as far as questions. Uh, I now want to invite my uh, colleagues to ask questions. If you have any questions for the applicant panel, uh, please use the raise hand button uh, on the participant panel. Uh, council, are there any council members that have any questions? No, Chair, I see no members with questions for the panel. Okay, there being uh, no further questions, uh, the applicant panel uh, is excused. Uh, Council, are there any members of the public uh, who wish to testify on the uh, 9114 Fifth Avenue rezoning application? If there are any members of the public who wish to testify on the 9114 Fifth Avenue rezoning proposal, please press the raise hand button now. The meeting will briefly stand at ease while we check for members of the public. Chair Moya, I see no members of the public who wish to testify on this item. Okay. Uh, there being uh, no members of the public who wish to testify uh, on the 94, on the 91 uh, 14 Fifth Avenue rezoning proposal. Um, I'm sorry. Hold on, I just lost my place. Okay, there being, there being no members of the public uh, who wish to testify on 9114 Fifth Avenue rezoning proposal under ULERP's number uh, C190447ZMK and N1 and N90448ZRK, uh, the public hearing is now closed and the item is laid over. Uh, I now open the public hearing on the pre-considered uh, LU item for the 214-32 uh, Hillside Avenue rezoning proposal under ULERP number C00190 ZMKQ relating to property in council member Gudenchek's district in Queens. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an R2 district to an R2 C23 district. The proposed action would facilitate the development of a two-story commercial building, which would include five accessory, uh, accessory parking spaces and one uh, loading berth. Uh, before we hear from the applicant, um, I'd like to give my colleague, um, uh, Council Member Gradenchek, the opportunity to make some remarks. Do we have Barry G? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah. And um, uh, in my over five years in the council, I will note for the record that this is the first uh, land use application to get this far. Um, we're kind of tough in Eastern Queens, uh, but it has uh, been a pleasure to work with the applicant. I met with them uh, along with the uh, land use staff of the council. I will note that um, they are taking what is a, a rundown shabby looking garage currently and uh, turning it into um, office space. Uh, that's their hope anyway, and a, a pharmacy and 
Uh, it did, uh, we met with the community board and it passed the community board, uh, I believe 41 to one, if I remember correctly. So I'm uh, gonna listen one more time this morning, but uh, th this application does have my support and I thank you for bringing it here this morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, um, Council Member uh, Council, if you can uh, please call the first panel for this item. The applicant panel includes Richard Lobel and Frank Noriega. Land Use Council for the applicant. Panelists, if you have not already done so, please accept the unmute request in order to begin to speak. Okay, and uh, Council, if you can uh, please administer the affirmation. Panelists, please raise your right hands. Uh, okay, Richard Lobel. Uh, you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and an answer to all council member questions. I do. Thank you. Uh, we are in receipt of, the, of your slideshow presentation for this proposal. Uh, when you are ready to present the slideshow, please say so, and it will be displayed on screen by our staff. Uh, the slide will be advanced when we say next. Please note that there may be a slight delay in both the initial loading and the advancing of slides. Once again, anyone who requires uh, an accessible version of this presentation uh, may send an email request to testimony at council.nyc.gov. And now if the panelists would uh, please restate your name and affirmation for the record, you may begin. Richard Lobel of Shell Mobile PC for the applicant. Good morning. Good morning. You may begin whenever you're ready. Thank you. Uh, if you can post a presentation, that would be great. For what Council Member Grudenchik now has told us is a historic rezoning, having gotten this far. <laughs> Very excited. Um, so you can see before you the property. This is the Hillside Avenue rezone, rezoning, um, the property being between uh, 215th Street and Vanderveer Street along Hillside Avenue. Uh, as you can see from the initial picture, this property currently is home to a uh, auto repair and used car sale lot. It is an unattractive lot. Uh, this was the previous use of the site, not the applicant's use of the site. The applicant has since um, purchased the site and demolished it. However, this was the subject of BSA variance granted in 1992 uh, that would permit these legal uses at the site. These are historic uses at the site, having been there for um, greater than 30 years. So uh, as uh, Council Member Grudenchik has said, this is something which the community has been in favor of. It was a 41 to one vote at community board 13. And so we're happy to, to bring this rezoning to the council. Next slide. Just one second, Richard, I think you're on mute. Got me now? Yes. Yep. Great, thank you. So you will see the um, the right the zoning map here is demonstrates the current use of the area. This is R two, um, and you can see also that Hillside Avenue, which is a commercial thoroughfare in the avenue, has a commercial presence here with regards to commercial districts. Roughly fourteen of the surrounding twenty five uh, blocks have a commercial overlay along the southern portion of Hillside Avenue. So this rezoning is definitely within the context of the surrounding area. Next slide. The next slide is the tax map, which demonstrates uh, the zoning district boundary. You can see that the zoning district here would be a 100 foot deep commercial C23 overlay uh, along Hillside on the southern portion of the, of the street. Uh, and this would cover the applicant's site a roughly 11,000 square foot site, uh, absent a small piece, uh, and the five lots immediately to the uh, east and northeast of the subject site. Um, to note, this is a use rezoning, not a bulk rezoning. The underlying R2 remains unchanged. Uh, this would merely allow a commercial use uh, within the property uh, at the site, as well as uh, in the neighboring sites. Next slide. Importantly here, there are roughly six lots included with the within the rezoning. And you will see that in addition to the applicant site, which as discussed has a, an existing commercial use, 
or one that has recently been terminated, the surrounding five lots along Hillside here to 215th Street all have ground floor commercial with residential above. So um, these properties are all existing R2 with commercial. The, um, while the rezoning here would not allow for any new development on the site, given that there's no additional bulk allowed, it would legalize or actually make conforming these non-conforming uses, thus greatly benefiting the existing uh, property owners along this block frontage. Next slide. So again, as with every slide, we include uh, photos of the site. Please feel free to page through the next four pages. You can see the commercial use on the ground floor of the site, as well as the uh, surrounding buildings. All of those buildings, again, reflect two-story buildings with ground floor commercial with residential above. This is the zoning change map, which again, as you can see, merely takes um, the existing R2 and puts down a 100-foot C23 commercial overlay. Uh, next slide. Uh, the remaining slides demonstrate the proposal for the site. Uh, as was stated by Councilmember Gradenchik, this would be the commercial use of the applicant, uh, Farbest Pharmaceuticals, uh, Mr. Munir Islam and Intikhab Ahmed are um, two of the um, executive officers of the uh, pharmaceutical company. They have additional locations in the city. This would allow for a ground floor local retail pharmacy use of roughly six to 7,000 square feet with administrative offices above of roughly 2,500 square feet. This would produce a relatively attractive building in an area right now where you've got uh, used car auto sales and repair. Next slide. So again, this just merely shows the massing of the site. Um, and uh, as you feel free to page through the remaining photos or the remaining plans, we would merely say that this was a, a fantastic process we had with Community Board 13 Queens. You will see that, for example, the loading on the site is now along Hillside Avenue. This was requested by Community Board 13 Queens in order to minimize disruption to the residential neighbors on Vanderveer Street. The applicant was happy to comply with this, as well as with plantings, lightings, and really what was whatever was requested by the Community Board. So it's been a wonderful process. Um, the applicant is quite excited to open here the local area expressed interest in having uh, you know, a local retail pharmacy here that would be utilized by members of the surrounding community. And we're happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you, uh, Richard. Uh, just two quick questions here. Um, how do you respond to the Borough President's recommendation to reach a goal of 30% uh, of the local hiring and using and the use of MWBE businesses during the construction and the development uh, of the project. Right, so uh, Chair Moya, the, the square footage of this project is small, really tiny. I mean, it's a 9,500 9, square foot uh, building that is proposed. Uh, understanding that, I would say that the applicant here particularly has been so um, engaged with the community and it really has been has really bent over backwards to, to try to accommodate every request that was made of them. That uh, in my conversations with them, they said that they would be happy to, um, to uh, attempt to achieve the Queensboro president recommendations. Uh, again, um, you know, it is a small project. We don't think that there would be a lot of jobs generated, but we would be happy to at least make that attempt. And again, to, uh, as has been requested previously by the council, to uh, inform and update the council with regards to our efforts in that regard. Um, okay, great. And uh, just my last question before I turn it over to Councilmember Gredenchek. Um, how do you respond to the community board's uh, recommendation that all the exterior uh, lighting for the, sec for the security purposes uh, should be inward facing with respect to the residential neighborhoods, uh, the, the residential neighbors and a, a gateway across the rear parking area when the pharmacy is closed? The applicant is happy to comply with both these requests, not only for the comfort of the surrounding community, but also for the security of the site itself. So this is uh, happy to do it. It's a win-win for everybody. Great, uh, thank you, Richard. Um, now I'm gonna turn it over uh, to my colleague, uh, Councilmember Gredenchek uh, for some questions. Uh, I just, uh, just wanna say, Mr. Chairman, thank you for your questions. And I wanna thank the applicant. Um, they were very straightforward with us. They, they uh, were very accommodating. 
I also want to note that, um, you know, my area is not very well served by mass transit and this portion of Hillside Avenue is at least relatively close to uh, mass transit. There are many bus lines that pass right in front of the applicants uh, site and um, they are, I wouldn't say they're really within walking distance of the subway, but they're a much closer to the subway um, than uh, some of the other parts of my district. So, um, and I wanna, you know, they have worked with everybody and they've been very uh, responsive to the need. We do have a residential community uh, just south of this site and it extends all the way south to um, Jamaica Avenue. And I, I appreciate what they've tried to do. And uh, we, again, we have met, um, with the gentleman he mentioned and um, they have been very accommodating. So uh, I have no other issues with this. So thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Lobel as well. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Denchik. Um, council, do we have any other council members that uh, have any questions for the panel? No, Chair, I see no members with questions for the panel. Okay, uh, there being no further questions, uh, the applicant panel is excused. Uh, Council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on the 214-32 uh, Hillside Avenue rezoning application? If there are any members of the public who wish to testify on the 214-32 Hillside Avenue rezoning proposal, please press the raise hand button now the meeting will briefly stand at ease while we check for members of the public. Chair Moya, I see no members of the public who wish to testify on this item. Okay, thank you. Uh, there being no members of the public who wish to testify on the 214-32 Hillside Avenue rezoning proposal under ULERP number C200190ZMQ, the public hearing is now closed and the item is laid over. Um, I just want to check with our council. We've, uh, all the votes have been, been passed. Yes, sure. We have uh, the, the Votes have been recommended to the full land use committee for uh, adoption. Great, thank you. And that concludes today's business. I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, uh, subcommittee council, uh, land use and other uh, council staff and the Sergeant at Arms uh, for participating in today's meeting. This meeting is here.